Hello and welcome to Retech and today we're going to cover a subject from our recent or fairly recent history and we all know these things. These are mp3 players, personal music players. Most people quite rightly at the time assumed that you know the intellectual rights, the original invention came from Apple and this is not entirely the case. They launched it they publicized it, they basically sat on a pedestal saying that, you know, this was their baby. The, the actual audio player, the digital audio player that became the iPlayer, that became the MP3 player, was kind of invented way back in time. It was nowhere near the 2000s when the iPlayer was launched. And it was nowhere near the sort of mid to late 2000s when these basically digital audio players started to come to market. It was in 1988. Yes, 1988. The original audio player, digital audio player, was invented and then later patented. Now, a lot of you are going to think, well, that's not possible because, you know, we would have heard about it. Well, it was. It was in the papers, it was in the press, and there was even a massive court case about it, which is what we're briefly going to cover today. But Apple did not invent the digital audio player. The actual credited inventor of the digital audio player, uh, which then became the iPlayer and the MP3 player and so on, was Mr. Kramer. He was a, a British serial inventor. And at the age of 23, he invented the, what we would now know as the modern MP3 player. And it was in late 1978, finalised in 1979, and it was remarkably similar to what Apple and a lot of other companies launched later on in the 2000s. He invented a machine which had a screen and a circular button, which we'll put up in a moment and show you the description of it, and um, it was remarkably similar to what the iPod ended up being and the drawings are very very stark. You couldn't put them side by side and say that these weren't the original iPod drawings because they are very similar to the model that was actually released. Now this device could contain 8 megabytes of information. 8 meg could store approximately 3.5 minutes of music but there was a 10 minute version that he was working on and he assumed quite rightly that um, storage capacity would increase and the memory costs would reduce and it was based on bubble memory. Now he also had a, a version which ran off of a hard drive. Sound familiar now does this because this is the route that Apple went down as well so there's too much of a coincidence for it not to have been, you know, the invention of Mr. Crane. And his invention was patented. It was patented across the world. And it was backed by no other than Sir Paul McCartney. He was one of the major backers of the project at the time. So again, the evidence is kind of stacking up here you know, as in who was the original inventor of the MP3 or the iPod. So he set up a company and his orders that came in were equivalent to £60 million in today's money. But unfortunately, the, the new startup company struggled to raise the £60,000 it needed to renew its patents on the device. So eventually the patents rolled over and it became the property of the public domain. Now this is where a very savvy minded corporation stepped in if you'd like to kind of think of it in those terms. They really didn't do anything illegal, they didn't do anything massively underhanded in a way but 
you know they didn't credit anybody with the original design either um but you know because of this they were um eventually sued because things don't stay under the carpet for that long and it wasn't mr kramer that sued apple because by that time he kind of moved on and he was as again a serial inventor and he had his projects on the go and so on and it was something he'd largely forgotten about and brushed under the carpet because you know you do you move on and you try different things and most inventors who have invented something which hasn't quite worked out the way they wanted it to have moved on and they've tried different things now mr kramer really didn't think much more of this um, until about 2006 2007 when apple contacted him while he was actually up a ladder doing some diy and asked him if he would come to their offices and appear in a court case and the reason for that is that apple was being sued by another company who were claiming that the invention of the digital audio player or the ipod was actually theirs now initially mr kramer thought it was a joke he thought somebody was winding him up asking him to go and kind of defend something he designed virtually decades before and um he went along with it and he appeared at the courts and he was asked a lot of questions especially from the lawyers of a company called burst.com and more than likely one of the original dot-com bubbles that were kind of emerging at that time and um, they were claiming that they had invented the original ipod or the mp3 style player mr kramer was asked to produce his own designs and his own early patents for this device which he did and subsequently 15 of the 22 infringements that burst.com claimed that apple had broken were dropped were dropped immediately by the the courts and that left the remainder of the um infringements that burst.com actually accused apple of infringing of breaking of breaching to be fought out within the law so fought out within the courts and fought out legally but in 2007 the case was quietly settled between apple and burst and um, that ended up in being a 10 million pound deal between apple and burst for them for apple to basically acquire or lease the rights to certain patent infringes in allegedly that um, burst.com claimed that apple had breached now this was quite a small settlement when you consider how many ipods were sold and apple kind of got away very very lightly on this but again it's history and as we all know the ipod went on to be a massive massive financial success for apple now mr kramer didn't receive anything from this all he received from apple was his consultancy fee and also his costs so yeah really the um person who came out the worst out of this was mr kramer but mr kramer also approached apple for compensation for his original designs because as you can see on screen now you can see his original design for the mp3 dash audio player dash iplayer style device and it's remarkably close to what apple produced in fact most people say it was virtually a facsimile but you know this is all water under the bridge now and we're talking about it retrospectively so apple kind of won out on this one they made a lot of money and mr kramer didn't really make anything from the entire deal but that didn't stop him from being a inventor and that's what he continued to do so what i'm going to do is i'm going to read out a little extract from his technical side from his original patent and ideas so 
In 1981, Kramer filed for a UK patent for a newly conceived digital audio player. And it was called the IXI, and that was a patent in the UK, and it was issued in 1985. It takes a little bit of time for these things to work out. And the US patent was issued in 1987. Now, the player was the size of a credit card, gone by his patent descriptions, with a small LCD screen and a navigation and volume buttons, and would have had a capacity of at least 8 megabytes of solid state bubble memory. And that was enough for about three and a half minutes of audio, but there was a 10 minute audio version planned. Now, that was going to use a memory card system and it was going to have an increased audio frequency. Now, it was running 16-bit sampling and this was way back in 1981. Um, so it had 16-bit sampling at 44.1 kilohertz and it was unveiled as a pre-production prototype at the APRS Audiovisual Trade Exhibition in 1986. So again, a long time before Apple and anybody else really had thought about a digital audio player. So really, it was a case of too early for the the technology at the time because you know really three and a half minutes or ten minutes of you know music isn't a massively long time to be listening to something and the frequency range wasn't massively fantastic but you've got to take it put it into context this was between 1981 and 1987 and there was nothing else like it on the market nothing else now, looking down what he's done previously, okay, well, he's still involved in technology sector. Um, he's chairman of the British Inventors Society, and this comes straight from his own kind of blog. And he's also a technology advisor to the Clean Energy Circle. So, you know, he's not doing too bad, really. And at the end of the day, you know, maybe his work within the clean energy kind of circle is probably going to be a bit more of a legacy than a very short-lived product because it was short-lived it was effectively killed off when the iphone came along and the smartphone came along so really his legacy is probably going to last a lot longer than a digital device so there you have it now officially in 2008 mr kramer was a officially recognized as the inventor of the digital audio player which is fantastic and it was recognized via the court so it can't really be disputed now and it seems quite apt that the one of the biggest selling products of the 2000s the iPod was invented by basically a 23 year old British guy in his shed. Now, isn't that always the case? The people that change the world are the people who work out of a shed in their garden. It's not the fact that they've got millions and millions of pounds or millions of dollars to spend on anything. It's not the fact that they want to make a massive amount of money it's a fact that they have an idea and they run with it and they know that this idea is going to change the world which for a brief moment in time it did so thanks for watching and i hope you'll subscribe and we'll see each other on this channel a little bit later and don't forget to check out our new channel retro hour which covers all of the subjects we've covered on a month by month basis in a compressed form as well as more in-depth details and basically a little bit more on the subjects that we don't normally cover on retake so thanks for watching and i'll see you soon <music>